Good afternoon all, CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Wednesday afternoon, February 24th. We are looking at the SPY ETF's market profile here on Window Trader. Very impressive day. Um, I'll tell you, this has been some absolute battle between the bulls and the bears with these trend days, with these flushes, and then these grinds up. I mean, when you when you look at what transpired this just this week alone, look at Monday, the way we gap lower, close the gap only to give it all back. Yesterday, gap lower, take it all back and go out with a trend day up only to give it all back this morning when we open, take out the single prints, dip below the, uh, the price spike. Now, we didn't stay there much. We just dipped below there. And then look what we do after we get out. You know, one of the biggest and most important things I did today was in B period, I told my room, I said, I would be very careful taking a break of A's low. I said, even though we filled the single prints and got below the price spike, I said, I would want confirmation that we're going to stay below D's high. And I'm telling you, at least five or six people said I was ready to take that break. And if you took that break of A's low, you quickly, if you didn't have a stop, would have gotten hurt. And then we trended. We had six sets of single prints today at one point. We hold three. Now, we'll get back to the SPY and ES in a minute. Let's go over the other ones. Russell opens at the top of its range from yesterday. Holds their price spike. They go out with a trend day as they have single prints in C and D period. Now, they did end nine wide, but there's not a lot of overhead. There's not a lot of uh, anything stopping the Russell from their all-time highs. They have the high from the 16th, and then they have their all-time high from February 10th. Okay, now, they do have, I'm trying to think if they filled those single prints from that day. They had a trend day out there uh, on their all-time high, but I think it got filled on the 16th. So there's not a lot of headwind for the Russell. Triple Q's is definitely a much different story. After all the work they did to fill that gap yesterday, they opened all the way down here, but I do give them credit. They got back above D's high, and they went out trend. So look at these important levels here. Yesterday's price spike failed today. Well, guess where our single prints get filled? Same thing, A's high. So critical level here for the triple Q's and the NQ to hold. They also go out with a price spike. Now remember, they did finally take back the trend, the trend day and the double distribution day from the 22nd. So that's another step, right? They filled that huge gap yesterday and now they take that back. They still have one gap here, another gap here. They still have two gaps to the upside and two other trend days to take back. The one from the 19th and the one from the all-time high. So there is definitely a lot more headwind for the triple Qs and the NQ to go make it all-time high. But they're taking baby steps. Now us and the ES. We have no headwind whatsoever above us now. Right? We have, incredibly, we have three daily highs now. Very close to each other, which we'll go over. That's going to be a magnet. Um, we do go out with a price probe too today. And again, there's not a lot of headwind at all for us to the upside. I will tell you this, though. We don't want to fail as buyers. And when I say we, bulls, buyers, whoever's long, whoever wants to be long, you don't want to see today fail the way Monday did and the way yesterday did. By that, I mean if we fill today's single prints tomorrow and or Friday and get accepted back below B's high, guess what? We're right below those two weekly lows again. So here's my line in the sand going forward. Is B's high. You want to hold that as a bull. If you do, you should make new all-time highs. As far as my trading today, I had a good day. Again, I did a lot in the morning, and then I messed around with the futures. Believe it or not, I traded the MES a little bit today, um, later in the day. But my big trades came uh, with the options. Believe it or not, I did okay on shorts today. My biggest trade, though, was on the long in C period. But I shorted um, A period, the 390 puts, when we traded up against the uh, price spike, and that worked out initially. I did okay on those. 
Then again in B period. Now, I didn't take the break of B, uh, A's low. That's for sure. But when we took out A's high, I said, I think I'm going to take a short against both yesterday's high and the overnight high. Again, 390 puts, which worked out. Then C period started. Right before C started, I, was, um, I wanted to take um, a long before we took out B's high. Didn't pull the trigger right away. But when C opened, came back a bit, I took a size call play. Took 100 of the 386 calls. Now, we did fill the single prints. And I believe it or not, I was about to add another 100. But then it reversed pretty quickly, went up, and that turned out to be... A nice touchdown trade for me on the 100, three, 100 calls, 386 um, expiration. Then I took a short in D. I'm sorry, the D short was against the overnight high, not the B. But I did take a short in B. I wasn't expecting single prints right away, and that worked out. So I took a short to 391 puts initially against uh, the day's high and the overnight high. It worked out before we started going higher. Um, then after that, I didn't. That was it with the uh, with my options. I actually took a small short in G with the MES. I shorted the futures, um, which worked out again. It was only small. I'm just playing with them, trying to uh, see how I can do. Um, and then I did another one in J period, which worked out. When we had the reversal bar. And then I did one more actually in L. I thought L would take out K's low. It did not. It came out, took out K's high, took those off. So I made on the on the two shorts in G and J I made on the uh, uh, futures. I lost on the one in L. I took it off when we took out K's high. So good day overall. Destinations for tomorrow. So for the upside... We have today's high of 392.23. And then we have two other daily highs very close to each other. We have 392.38, 392.66. So I would think, I would think if we take out today's high, those other two daily highs should fall rather easily. Now there is still a chance we get consolidation after a day like today um, somewhere inside of here before we do that. But we'll see. Uh, above that, we have 392.85, 12 wide from the 16th. 393.29 afternoon rally high from the 16th. 394.17 weekly high and soon to be monthly high and all-time high, poor high from the 16th. And 395.35 pre-market all-time high from, you guessed it, the 16th. For the downside... We have six destinations for today. We have the price probe, which is Jay's high of 392.16. We have the afternoon pullback low, which is um, K's low of 390.99. Then we have our three sets of single prints. They start at 390.16, get filled at 07. That's a small set left in F, period. Then we have 389.31. E's low gets filled at C's high of 388.62. And the third set, D's low... It starts at 388.25, gets filled at 387.68, and then today's low of 385.27. So again, today's low, I'm sorry, B's high is critical, the last set of single prints. And then on the charts, I'm just going to show you the weekly and the daily. So here's the weekly chart. We got below those two weekly lows. Think about it. We got down to 380.20 yesterday. We closed at 392 and change. We rallied $12 off the lows and back into these two weekly lows. So we're in balance in the weekly. You can call it a three-week balance. You can call it whatever you want to call it. As long as we was, if we stayed below those two weekly lows, like I said, these two weekly lows were in play, which were 368.27 and 371 and change. Obviously, things have changed dramatically now. Now, on the daily, we stopped the one-time framing down, so the daily goes from down to balance. I would use today's high as the, as the top of the three-day balance, yesterday's low as the bottom, or 
because it's so subjective, you could use this whole nine day balance that we came out of in our back end. It depends on what you want, but the daily is balance. Again, we kept a lot of traders out of trouble when we kept them out of that short at B's low. We kept a lot of traders out of trouble when we said long or wrong when we were trending. It, it, it's not just a case of I'm long here, I'm short here. It's dissecting the market, showing the room, what the market's attempting to do. And even if you don't take a trade because you don't like to grind up, it's keeping them out of a poor trade and staying out of trouble. Come check us out at camelbacktrading.org. I hope you had a great day trading. Have a great evening and we'll speak prior to the opening tomorrow. Remember, I'm doing a webinar with Window Trader tomorrow night. It's free. If you have any interest, go check. I put something on it uh, on Twitter yesterday. Check it out or private message me. I'll send you the link. Have a great night and we'll speak prior to the opening tomorrow.